Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Upkick MMA episode 405. I am Brendan. All right, this is UFC Fight Night Whitaker versus Alice Garoff prelims. Nasrat, Hawk Paras versus Jared Gordon, and the rest of the prelims are going to break them all, all those fights down round by round, talk about all that stuff. If you like this kind of thing, subscribe to the channel. That way, the next video is coming out. I'd really appreciate it. And if you end up liking this video, hit the like button. Why not? Good for everybody. Good for the whole family. All right, these prelims were uh, kind of a slog for a lot of them. This fight was not. This fight was very good, uh, very competitive fight. Let's get into some uh, statistics. All right, uh, Hawk Prost, always great hands. Great hands, very fast. Gordon, durable as all get out. Um, really started to put it on later in the fight. Um, it was really close. Uh, Gordon using that takedown attempt to, to tree top and uh, land a hard right hand instead of actually getting the single leg finish. He was really just happy with holding the leg and then landing a couple right hands. Hawk Prost has those fast hands. Gordon needs to stay on, on the grappling to slow him down. Eventually he did, but he, man, he took a lot of damage in the meantime. Hawk Prost landing the left hand almost at will. Gordon following and landing when he can with that right, but just taking a ton on the chin. Gordon is really uh, has really good pressure. It's going to be interesting if he can slow Hawk Prost down. Gordon is eating this hard left hands and just staying in his face, but he took so much damage in the round. 35 to 16 for striking numbers in favor of Hawk Prost. Easily his best round by far. 10-9, no question. Second round. Gordon's taking the shots and throwing them back and sitting down on his and getting that ankle pick, doing the same thing he did in that first round, but now his pressure is really starting to wear on Hawk Brost. Gordon's game plan looks like he knew he was going to eat a bunch of shots on his way in, and he wants to break Hawk Brost. I just don't know if it's going to work. Like I didn't know if it was going to work uh, about halfway through this round, and then he really started to put it on him. Gordon chasing him down, landing some hard right hands, and the game plan is working. Hawk Brost just can't keep landing all those hard shots. He just can't keep up. Um... I mean, it, not that he can't keep up uh, with the amount of volume. It's just like he just can't keep throwing as hard as he was trying to get Gordon out of there because Gordon wasn't going anywhere. Punishment round for both guys. Gordon getting the better of it. Clearly his round, 55 to 37. No question. Third round, Hawk Prost standing his ground, throwing out those combos, but then starts to have to back up. Gordon, two minutes in, in is finding the mark pretty often and able to apply the pressure like he did in the second round. Gordon's able to do a very good job so often, uh, every so often moving his head um, and firing back, but just still taking a ton of damage. Uh, could literally come down to the last 30 seconds. Go, It could go either way. I have Gordon landing more and avoiding the stuff coming back of him, back at him for the last 30 seconds, right? Uh, 29 to 28, but uh, in enemy territory, unlikely that Gordon is going to get it. And, uh, that's what we saw here. Hawk Prost ends up getting the the split decision. Um, very very close fight. I um, like I said, I scored it for Gordon, but just barely, and it was because of that last interaction for the last thirty seconds. If you at any point gave Hawk Prost better credit than I did, you gave him this round. If you gave him that last thirty seconds, you gave him this round. Um, there's just very difficult to score just by. Uh, just watching it one time. That's how you got to score. You can't go back and watch it in slow-mo replay and count all the strikes because that's not how they're judged. You can't judge a fight three days later, right? You got to judge it the day of, the moment. It's over. Um, let's see. Mark Collette and Saul Diamato both giving Hawk Prost the first and the last round. Understandable. And then Clemens Warner giving the last two rounds to Gordon. Again, understandable. <laughs> Very close fight. You're just not going to see it, especially over in enemy territory. You're not going to see uh, um, a lot of things going your way for Gordon, that is. Here's an interesting one. I do want to look at the scorecards of this one, even though they were not needed. Uh, Muhammad Na uh, Naimov versus uh, Philippe Lima. Philippe? Lima. Uh, hard kicks from both guys. Uh, Lima shoves him down with a push kick, runs into a flying knee. Lima's throwing some heat and shelling up well. He stepped up on short notice, and he looked like he was really trying to get him out of there early. Maybe he didn't have enough energy, but he carried it through the entire fight. Uh, Naimov gets a takedown after getting away uh, from a leg entanglement. Naimov did no damage on the ground, should not get this first round. Lima outlanded him 14-7. to There was very little damage. What? What did he land ground strikes? He landed two ground strikes when he was in ground control. 
Um, some of that control on the ground was not actually ground control. It was him trying to get out of a leg entanglement, so this two minutes is deceptive. It should be Lima's round. Second round. So I had uh, I had Lima up 10-9. Again, enemy territory. Unlikely to happen. Naimov really wanting to get back to the ground, trying to catch a kick. Uh, Naimov is not the cleaner striker, but he is finding the mark more often, and Lima is still landing in there tight with those body hooks. And up top, close round, it really depends on what you're watching for. I leaned towards Lima. Again, not a lot of control time, not a lot of damage either direction that really separated it, but Lima landed more. I feel it felt like he did more damage overall, going to the body well and tight with those 8-3. to three. He was outstruck to the head by Naimov, landing 10-7, to seven, but... I, I overall it looked like Lima landed more. So I had him up. I had him up twenty to eighteen. Yep. Uh <laughs> I know that like that's unlikely, but we'll see. Uh Lima's jumping uh jumping in throwing uh, jumping knees, throwing hard with those right hands, and then he gets a takedown, takes the back and gets a rear naked choke. <laughs> crowd went quiet when that happened but anyway um interested to see how the judges scored it look at that Vito Palillo uh, given the first two rounds to Lima Saldi Amato given the first two rounds to Naimov come on man that's second round and David Leatherby split in the first and second round so was anybody's fight going into the last round here really came down to just one judge David David Leatherby whether or not he gave it to uh Lima or Naimov, but great, great for debut fight. Looked fantastic. Uh, Renat Fakhradinov versus Nicholas Dalby. Again, just not the most exciting fight. Fakhradinov sitting down on his shots and swinging away. Dalby staying light on the feet, going up top with those kicks, staying mobile, gets a clinch. Fakhradinov going at the combos, but not landing. Uh, then they want he wants to take down as Dalby bounces uh, his way across the cage. Great takedown defense. Big right hand from uh, Fakhradinov. Uh, Dalby drops, but Fakhradinov just can't land anything after that. Dalby is not done. He's still standing there and taking some. He's landing some shots of his own. Um, the drop is just really hard to score it for him. Fakhradinov outstruck him here, twenty-seven to seventeen. I didn't see that, but. He definitely won this round 10-9. Fakhradinov stepping in with that big overhand. Again, gets a takedown right back up. Dalby, in, is when he's in space, using that long-range attack, his long-range attacks and circling, he can find success. But he really wants to clinch. It's been his thing uh, for the last few fights now. Fakhradinov just not landing anything this round uh, to swing the damage in his favor. So I had it 19-19. Looking at the striking numbers here, 31-24 to in favor of Dalby. So I, I don't see how you can give this to Fakhradinov. Um... Last round, Fakhradinov wants to grapple this round, not wanting to standing. Um, yeah, yeah, he's looking wobbly in there, taking damage. Dalby did more damage in this round despite being controlled. He really did. He was controlled quite a bit for three minutes, uh, three minutes, and a lot of that was against the cage, not on top. And the striking numbers are pretty close, 18 to 17, but Dalby did more damage. He did more damage. Go back and watch it. He's just not going to get the... It's unlikely, again, that you're going to get the call in enemy territory like this. Uh, Anders Olsen gave him the gave him the, the last two rounds, but David Leatherby and Ben Cartledge both knew their place, and they're like, I want to get out of this place alive, so I'm going to go ahead and give it to the per the, the, the right person here. Uh, all right, uh... Kyung Ho Kong versus Win uh, Win Gafarov. This fight was weird, man. It was like Kong like didn't wake up. Gafarov throwing a lot of his hooks and landing hard low kicks. Kong fails on a takedown, ends up on bottom for most of the round. He gets a standing back and going for the rear naked choke, but it was way too long. Gafarov obviously wins this round. Second round, uh, Kong. Gets low, gets a takedown, gets them out, but then he's looking slow on the feet when they get back up, loses position on the ground. Uh, the hooks are really landing for Gafarov here. And again, not not a whole lot of action. Outstruck here, 22 to 9. Clearly Gafarov's round, 20 to 18. Last round here. 
again, the hooks are letting her gaff off, but Khan gets a takedown one step ahead, and Khan could get this last round technically, but I don't think so. I gave it 30-27 to Gafarov. He outstruck him, did a ton of damage in the very end here, and it, you know, zero strike, the significant strikes landed for Kong. Not a good performance. Yeah, that's how all three judges had it. All right, um, Magomed uh, Gaji Asulov versus uh, Brendison Hibero. I'm sure this fight could have been interesting. It, it wasn't. Uh, Gaji Asulov, um, I don't know. He, he barrel landing the kicks in the legs and the bottom of the outside, and he barrel gets a takedown, but Gaji Asulov grabs the fence, and then the ref stops it to adjust position. Here's one of those times where, like, this happened, like I said, this happened later later in the uh, car, in the main card, later in the night, and Mark Goddard decided after already punishing the other guy, It's whatever this like. I know they're two different referees, but this one where he gave him the position, he puts him down there. That's not how this goes. He didn't fall to the hip. He put him on his back. It, like it's it's different. There's when you stop the momentum of a takedown, like it's it's hard to adjust and get things go back going to the way they were. Who knows what would have happened? You really can't adjust for that shit. It's easier just to take the point, especially when it's egregious like that. Take the point. Should have taken the point. And then Gaji Asulov grabs the fence again, holding him to the fence, doing it like he did it multiple times. Hard low kick from Hibero. Uh, Gaji Asulov is wobbly, but he catches a kick, gets a takedown. Hibero should win this round, clearly doing more damage, uh, outlanding him 11 to 8. But bad round, bad judge, or bad refing, horrible discipline. 10 9. Gaji Asulov takes another kick to the lead leg, changes stances. Gaji Asulov goes for the takedown, falls into the guillotine, gets him out. Um, he ends up staying on top. Doesn't do shit with it. How many ground strikes did he land? Four. Four ground strikes. Awesome. Uh, super bad fight to watch. 19-19. Last round. Hibero fails on a takedown. That's the rest of the round. This fight sucked. Uh, somebody scored it. Vito Palillo gave the first two rounds to Hibero. He really values that damage. Okay. Consistent with it. Uh, but he gave a 10-8 to Gaji Asulov in the last round. Hedging his bets. to Make sure he makes it out of the country alive. All right. <laughs> oh, man. And first fight of the night. Uh, Xiaolong versus Chang Ho Lee. Uh, frantic start to the fight with Shao pressing him to the cage somewhere. Uh, got a big cut. I think it was from a head clash. Uh, Shao landing with the counter right and a hard, uh, hard right hand, getting into the clinch and then getting the body lock, lift and slam. Striking numbers are pretty close, but the uh, the round was uh, the round wasn't. It was all Shao. Uh, Shao Long it, he was down on the strikes, twenty four to twenty two, but that was Shao Long's round for sure. Second round here, Lee, Lee coming, coming out fast, fast looking, looking to use that volume, volume hoping that Shao will wilt, but this is not happening, and Shao just keeps the pressure forward. Not the most interesting fight, but uh, Shao is staying out in front. Uh, he did get outstruck here, 38 to 28. I guess you could give him this round, but I, I didn't see a lot of damage in there. Those knees to the body from Lee, like, some of them were landing, but some of those were not landing. He, I don't, he, don't, he did not land 24 knees to the body. Go back and watch that live. They're they're they were making oohs and ahs about strikes that did not land to the body. Didn't even land to the arms. They just went to that area. Uh, so if that was a difference maker for you, you know, take ten of, take ten of those away. Take ten of those knees away and give them fourteen knees to the body. And all of a sudden it's a twenty eight twenty eight, and now Long doesn't look like he's so down on the strikes, huh? So. Uh, I had him up 20 to 18. Last round here, to be honest, neither of these guys look UFC ready. Very regional fight scene looking fight so far. Uh, Shao should win this fight. Um, this last round here, 22 to 18 in favor of Lee again. But uh, back and forth, damage went. You could give this last round to him. But if you look at scorecards here, um, 
Anders Olsen gave the first and last round to Long. Yep, yep makes sense. Vito Paulillo giving the first and last round to Lee. Okay. And then Clemens Warner giving the first and last round to Lee. That first round should have went to Long. And they gave the, they, everybody gave the second round to Long. No, Anders Olsen gave the second round to Lee. That, that was... You guys got to be consistent. Like, I, don't, I don't know. Um... Probably don't go back and watch all these. Uh, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you guys so much. It means a lot to me. It really does. I appreciate y'all. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you do like this kind of stuff. Um, I put out you know three videos every single week breaking out fights. So um, just trying to go over the fights for you guys and trying to figure out what's worth watching. Um, Hawk Cross versus Jared Gordon, great fight. We'll go watch it. Naima versus Lima, fun, fun fight. Go watch it. Fakir Dino, nah, you can skip that one. Kong, you can skip that one. Uh, he barrow, you can skip that one. Yeah. And then the main card, main card wasn't bad. Not the, the most interesting. Uh, the Mago made off fight sucked. But the rest of the fights were pretty good. Go watch those. All right, I appreciate y'all for stopping by. It means a lot to me. I love you guys. Have an amazing week. Peace.